Can you do Amazon Relay with a day cab? It's a question I get asked a lot, and if I'm being honest, it's a decision I kind of regret not making for myself after seeing how this last year has played out. Let's get after it. To be able to accurately answer this question, I did a little bit of research. I dug through every BOL I've ever been given by Amazon. Um, I came up with 152. Now I intentionally left out trailer required loads. I do own my own trailer. Occasionally I will do a trailer required load. I also left out uh, any sites that involved like third party sites. So basically this 152 was me going from Amazon site to Amazon site to Amazon site. Um, of the 152, the highest weight I came across was 17.5. The lowest weight I came across was 2,000 pounds, with the average of the 152 being 9,300 pounds. Now, somebody who's been with me for a minute is going to hear that 152 number, and they're going to think back and say, you know, didn't you say you moved, you know, 600 loads for Amazon? I have. Here's the thing. The majority of the time, I'm moving empty trailers. Amazon will pay a lot to move those empty trailers, especially when one of their warehouses with limited dock doors gets backed up with them and they can't take on new deliveries. They'll pay a lot to move those empty. So obviously, any kind of truck would work. Day cab, sleeper, single axle, tandem axle to move an empty trailer. But the bulk of my work with Amazon is moving empty trailers. So I think the real question here is not necessarily day cab versus sleeper. I think it comes down to how many axles you want the truck to have. I could be wrong, and if I am, feel free to educate me in the comments, but I believe those single axle trucks, doesn't matter if it's a day cab or a sleeper, I believe those max out at 65,000 pounds, whereas the tandem axle trucks, uh, those can go all the way up to 80. Where you would have to be cautious is when it comes time to booking loads. As long as you're staying, you know, within the Amazon system, going from, and these are pretty easy to tell on the load board, you know, going from like a sand five to a DSD eight to a sand three, that's all staying within the Amazon system, if you will. Um, what you would want to look out and uh, try to avoid would be a load like this that, you know, it's, it's originating at a sand three, ending at like a sand three, sand five, but in the middle, there's this kind of, you know, weird looking number weird looking name that is indicative of you going to a third party site and that's where you're going to need that tandem axle truck because chances are you're going to be pulling some weight the other thing that came onto my radar when I was doing my research to make this video was the whole thing of sleeping in a day cab. Now, I know it doesn't sound ideal and it might be something that only comes up once in a while, but the other thing that I would strongly encourage you to do, especially if you're thinking about getting a day cab, is just Google. Is it legal to sleep in a day cab? I mean, I went down a major rabbit hole trying to find an answer on this, and I really couldn't find one. I mean, I found truckers forums where there's people talking about, you know, a uh, DOT officer saw I was doing a cross-country trip and my day cab asked to see motel receipts. I couldn't produce those because I had been sleeping in the truck and I ended up getting in trouble. I don't want to, you know, lead you down a false sense of security or a false sense of insecurity. Just, you know, it's, it's worth checking out. Is it legal to sleep in a day cab? Definitely find that out for your area before it's something, before you make the investment of buying the truck. So I get the appeal of the day cab. I mean, you know, if I could have seen how this last year played out, would I have gotten a day cab? Of course. Would have saved me probably twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 when I made the decision to get into trucking. Logistically for me, I spend 99% of my time between San Diego, LA, and Ontario. So a day cab would have been perfect for that. I've only slept in this truck two times the whole time I've had it. I'm at home the rest of the time. And, you know, I see day cabs all the time at every Amazon facility I'm at. But, you know, before I make this glowing recommendation of go and get a day cab and you know start working for Amazon be sure and check into the axles you know be sure you know if a single axle is gonna work for you tandem axle and then be sure and do the uh, you know just do your research on is it legal to sleep in a day cab I'd hate to see you buy something and then find out that it's not gonna work for what you want it for I hope this video serves you well appreciate you for watching take care